and online whistleblower WikiLeaks has struck Washington another massive blow. The websites let loose several hundred thousand secret U.S. military documents. It's the largest leak ever. RT's Laura Emmett reports tonight from London. The files contain evidence of nearly 110,000 violent deaths that took place in Iraq in the years between 2004 and 2009. Two thirds of them, it seems, from these files, that's around 66,000 deaths, were the deaths of civilians during this combat. Half of those were killed by the Iraqi insurgency, and half, it seems, from the documents, were killed by uh, Allied troops in military action. The US always said, it's the which is what's interesting about this, that it wasn't keeping a record of civilian deaths. But in fact, it turns out from these files that the US military was keeping a very detailed record of what was going on. Some of these uh, files contain the names of uh, civilian people who have died, uh, the locations, the exact timings of their deaths. And of course, they hadn't been released into the public domain before. Uh, now, there's been a press conference here in London this morning releasing these details. And at that press conference was WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. And he uh, talked about that famous quotation that truth is the first casualty of war. Let's hear what he had to say. The attack on the truth by war begins long before war starts and continues long after a war ends. In our release of these 400,000 documents about the Iraq war, the intimate detail of that war from the US perspective, we hope to correct some of that attack on the truth. As far as what the results of today's leak will be, it seems that uh, there will be some legal action that will result from this. One of the organisations that uh, WikiLeaks has cooperated with in the release of this document is something called Public Interest Lawyers. They are dealing with uh, allegations from Iraqis of uh, British and uh, US forces torturing them in Iraq. Uh, and they say that there will certainly be a legal case to answer as a result of this. Let's uh, now get some more reaction for you. On our top story uh, today, of course, the uh, massive leak on WikiLeaks of the U.S. confidential documents. Entifad Kanbaz with us now, he's a politician for the National Iraqi Alliance Group. He's joining us on the line, I believe, from Baghdad. Let's talk to him. Uh, Mr. Kanbaz, very good evening to you. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. It is appreciated. Um, the U.S., as you'd expect, has slammed this online publication of the documents. But, of course, I guess it begs the question, is Washington trying to hide or distort the truth in some way? Well, it's clearly the U.S. government is very upset about releasing these documents, the so-called secret documents. But I also uh, can tell you from my sources in Washington that these documents, most of them, I have not had the time, obviously, to review 400,000 pages. But the skimming or the, uh, some of the reports that these documents have been uh, issued by low-level military officers and soldiers in Iraq. And some of them may not have high intelligence value, and some of them may have some information that is not attributed or substantiated. However, these are very important documents, has to be reviewed very carefully, word by word, to put the the, the dots in, 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 on the line. Indeed. Well, the, the interior minister in Iraq has already promised, doesn't he, legal action against those accused of torturing detainees. But hang on, WikiLeaks says that they've removed all the sensitive names to protect the identity of everyone they're talking about. So how could there be any future repercussions over any potential wrongdoings? Well, that's troubling, uh, to, to be honest with you. I would like to see all people, uh, Iraqis or Americans, who uh, practice torture or violated the law and the constitution of Iraq to be put in front of a uh, legal process and punished. However, as I said, some of these, uh, we have to be very careful and not jump conclusions because some of the reports may not be very accurate or, 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 or of high uh, uh, intelligence uh, uh, value. But there's also a saying, of course, there's no smoke without fire, isn't there? But anyway, what's the impact this league could have now on Iraqi politics? Is there a risk that it could fuel tensions in the country, lead to more sectarian violence, indeed? I don't think so. I think uh, we have passed over the, the bad era, the bad days of the 2005 and 6 and 7. I think the sectarian uh, uh, violence is over. Iraqis have realized 
uh, this is not going to work and they have uh, uh, the, 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 you know, all the Al-Qaeda has lost its bases. They have problems in funding and recruitment. I think, however, uh, these reports, uh, although they may not make uh, a tsunami political uh, changes in Iraq, but they also could uh, be very useful to, uh, to uh, uh, take people to justice and punish them for violating the law. I've heard some of the reports in these documents about Iran there and their relation between Iraqi officials and Iran. Are, a lot of them are unsubstantiated and un, it doesn't have a serious uh, intelligent uh, b b proof behind it. Okay, nonetheless, though, this is a huge blow. It's not being well received in Washington. Um, and, of course, let's think about those troops, tens of thousands of U.S. troops stationed in Iraq as we speak tonight. How is this league going to be received by them? And could it even lead to their early withdrawal, indeed, of their position seen as untenable? And what's it going to do for their morale? Well, I say, yeah, well, different, this is definitely not going to be good for morale. But the bottom problem, the major strategic mistake of the United States is occupation. There's no good occupation and bad occupation. The United States should not have done this mistake and accepted Resolution 1483 and became an occupier from liberator to an occupier. And this is exactly the outcomes of occupation. And I also would like to say the thousands of group of troops who are going to stay in Iraq until 2011, I think those will have barely enough uh, uh, power to do force protection. I think they will have very minimal uh, effect on the Iraqi street or in the Iraqi politics or any major uh, operations of military value in Iraq. And President Obama was very clear. He, he said uh, uh, military operations has ended in Iraq. Okay, and Fad Kamba, a politician from the National Iraqi Alliance. Thanks very much for being on the line from Baghdad tonight on RT.